welcome back to part five in this series of Behind the Design, where I'm taking you through the process that I took to create this app design and case study. If you're new to this series, make sure to check out the previous four videos, and you can also look at the detailed case study on Behance in the link in the description below. In part five, we're gonna be talking all about wireframing and testing. So let's get right into it with some tips. My first tip is to sketch first. So before you even move into Adobe XD or anything like that to start creating your wireframes, I would highly recommend going through a bunch of sketching first. And I talk all about this in the previous video, so if you missed it, definitely make sure to check that out. The reason this is so important is because you can be much more flexible and iterative whenever you're sketching versus wireframing. When you're wireframing, you really already have things planned out. Of course, things can change, but whenever you're sketching, you should be going through tons of different ideas and landing on the one that works the best. And the fastest, most effective way to do that is just with a pencil and paper. That way, once you move into your wireframes, you've got an idea of what works and what doesn't just from sketching, and then you're able to create these wireframes much quicker digitally. And my second tip is to use guides. So personally, the bare minimum of guides that I use, specifically when I'm working with an iPhone 10 screen, is 20 pixels on each side and 50 pixels on the top and bottom. This covers the notch on the top as well as the tab bar on the bottom of the screen. And this is just to give you a little bit of direction whenever you're starting out so that you're not starting with a completely blank canvas. Of course, when you're designing for different things like desktop, iPad, and different types of phone screens, these guides might change, but this is just what I use to start out for every single project that I'm designing on an iPhone X screen. My third tip is to create components, even in this wireframing stage. This is going to save you so much time down the road whenever you're designing. And if you don't know what components are, in Adobe XD, basically it's a way for you to group certain elements together into what they call a component that you can then reuse throughout your document. Whenever you make changes in the main component, it affects all of the other components. So basically what that means is whenever you're designing your wireframes, you're really just designing the skeleton of the component. Then what you can do is go back in your design phase and design out the component itself. What are the colors? What are the fonts? What words need to go in there? What are the different elements? And this change will apply to everywhere where you've had that component. So it will save you tons of time and stress and certainly make your workflow a lot easier. And if you wanna learn more about components in Adobe XD, definitely leave me a comment below and I would love to make a separate video on that. My fourth tip is just a plugin that I think would be super helpful for beginners who are creating wireframes. It's called Quick Mockup, and this is what it looks like. Basically, you have all of these pre-made components off to the left in your assets panel that you can use throughout your wireframes. And like I said, you can go back later and design out the actual style and how they're supposed to look once you get to the design phase. But this is just a great tool to use if you wanna save a little bit of time and take something that's out of the box and create wireframes with it. My fifth tip is to actually prototype the most important interactions here in this wireframing phase. It's really important that your interactions flow how you think they're going to flow in the final designs, and so it's better to test them early. So play around with how a prototype would work, where somebody would click, what would happen, and if that's the expected action, and that way you can get an idea of what is going to work and what might need to be shifted around. If you're just wireframing flat screens and then moving on to design, then there's gonna be a lot of questions and unknowns that could come up whenever you go to prototype the final product. Instead, see what these interactions look like in the wireframing phase, see how they flow, see how they work, see if they're intuitive, and then you won't have quite so many unknowns when you go to design. And going along with that, my last tip is to test in this phase. This is something that I actually learned the hard way. There was one project where I ended up going through and designing the entire app exactly how I wanted it to look before I ever tested it. 
And this was a bad idea because ultimately there were lots of things that confused people that I didn't know were going to be confusing. And so instead of going back to these low fidelity wireframes and just changing a few quick things around and then moving forward, I had to change so much of the final designs that it ended up not only taking more time and effort, but it actually took more out of me as a designer because I got so stuck on what I really liked in the designs and I was really thrown off when people weren't understanding how to go through these flows. So that's why I would tell you to test in the wireframing phase. Give these prototypes to some people and see what they get stuck on, see what's easy for them, see how they move through the flows. I like to set up some different flows and then prompt my users whenever I'm testing them. So here are some of the prompts I used for this Essence app. First, I asked people to look at the tab bar of the app and tell me what they expected to find behind each tab. This let me know if the icons that I was using were communicating effectively to my users. Next, I asked, let's say that you want to diffuse some calming aromas every single day as you're winding down from work. How would you go about setting that up? Then I asked, let's say you're going away for a weekend and you don't want your diffuser to diffuse any oils while you're away. What would you do? Something else I asked was, let's say you get a craving for the smell of lemon and you want to diffuse it immediately just for today. What would you do? As I asked these and a few other questions, I just watched as the person interacted with the prototype. I just paid attention to what they did to try to achieve that goal that I set up in the prompt. What did they stumble over? What did they do well? What did they get frustrated by? What questions did they ask me, if anything? And that just helped me figure out what was working and what wasn't so that I could go back and fix my wireframes before moving any further. So now that I've gone through those six tips, I would love to share with you some of the learnings I gathered from my testing of the wireframes. My first insight was to not reinvent the wheel and to use mental models. Something that was confusing to people as they were going through this prototype was that they didn't quite understand how their rituals were set up. And somebody actually mentioned that they wish that this was a similar experience to the alarm clock function inside of iOS. And so I thought that was a brilliant idea to kind of use that as something that people are already completely used to and adapt it ever so slightly for these rituals. This ended up working really well and it just goes to show that you should not reinvent the wheel. You should really look at what people are already used to using, mental models that they currently have, and how you can apply those so that there's less friction and less learning involved when someone's using your app for the first time. Something else I learned is that people need more feedback from the app. There was a little bit of confusion as to whether the user successfully set off the diffuser or not. Since someone isn't always going to be in the same room as their essential oil diffuser, and so they wouldn't necessarily be able to look over and see if it's diffusing an oil at any certain time, it's important that they're able to get that feedback from the app after they make an intended action. So I ended up adding this screen, which really ended up helping people understand that their action had been successful. The last big thing I learned was that preparing a new ritual should be as easy and have as little steps as possible. And this is because this is the most important task of the whole app. That's the whole point is to make these rituals and to set it and forget it. And so if making a ritual is the first thing you do in the app and it's too confusing or it takes too long, too many steps, too many taps, then it's probably gonna be off-putting for the person using the app. In my original wireframes, the instructions were clear to those who were testing the app, but there were just too many taps and screens involved. Since setting up a ritual requires people to do tasks outside of the app, such as loading their diffuser with the correct oils, I learned that it's really important to keep the number of actions within the app to the absolute minimum, as long as it still makes sense, but it should not overwhelm the user. Alright guys, I really hope that those tips were helpful and you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes for the wireframing and testing of this project. Next week we're going to be talking all about the designing phase, which is definitely the most fun, so I'm really looking forward to that video. So make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!